Well, hi everybody. Welcome back to Paula's Kitchen. It's episode 10 already. It's kind of a coolish breezy day here in Las Vegas. Glad to have you in the kitchen. We have Mr. Dale behind the camera and we've got me making dinner tonight. How about something Las Vegas related? Our daughter-in-law suggested since we're in Vegas, why don't we do something Vegas related? Well, how about this guy, Wolfgang Puck? He was one of the first chefs to make his mark on Las Vegas and we had the great honor and pleasure of meeting him when this cookbook came out. He did a book signing over at the Venetian. He was kind enough to autograph it for us. And what a lovely, lovely man he is, not to mention very talented chef. So what we're gonna be making today out of this cookbook is a fried chicken recipe that you start on top of the stove, finish in the oven. It's made with boneless chicken breasts and I can't wait to show it to you. So let's talk ingredients. It calls for four boneless chicken breasts, which I just bought this morning, nice and fresh. We are going to marinate those in some buttermilk for a little bit. We're gonna roll them in panko breadcrumbs that are seasoned with flat leaf parsley, oregano, pepper, kosher salt, and some garlic. So not a lot of ingredients, but I think this is going to pack a punch flavor-wise. Can't wait to get started. Come on, let's cook. Off camera, I cleaned and washed and patted dry the four chicken breasts and I've got those ready. I measured out one half cup of my fresh buttermilk. So what I'm going to do is put the chicken breasts in a bowl and I'm gonna sprinkle them with a half a teaspoon of kosher salt. All right. Wow, this is really cool. I haven't cooked with kosher salt. It's very coarse. Look at that, interesting. And then I'm going to pour on my half cup of buttermilk. And this is actually going to act as a marinade for the chicken. So I'm going to turn these around and make sure that they are well coated on both sides and down in the buttermilk. Interesting tangy smell already. These are going to be extraordinary fried chicken breasts. All right, that is it. Let me put some plastic wrap on them and then they are to be marinated in the refrigerator for a minimum of 30 minutes. All righty, we are ready to go. I'm gonna set a timer for 30 minutes. Put this in the fridge. My chicken breasts are marinating in the fridge. It's time to get our breadcrumbs ready. And I'm going to start, first of all, with one cup of the panko breadcrumbs. So let me measure that out. We already know this is gonna be delicious just because I'm using panko breadcrumbs. They're so crunchy and fabulous. All right, that's about a cup. Put that in my mixing bowl. And then there's going to be a variety of herbs and spices that go into the breadcrumbs. And there's a common theme here. They're all a teaspoon of everything. So I'm going to, first of all, do a teaspoon of my lovely flat leaf parsley. I cannot even tell you how great this parsley smells. Oftentimes we all, I think we're all guilty of this. We all use the bottled stuff the McCormick, which is really great, but there's something to be said for picking up a bunch of fresh herbs and cutting them up. Yum, it just smells wonderful. All right, let's see if I've got a teaspoon yet. I think I do. Incredible smelling. I don't know how finely chopped they are. Wolfgang might not approve. All right. Now, the other thing it called for herb-wise was oregano. I could not find fresh. So the equivalent is when you buy the uh, dried is about a third of the amount. So that would be instead of a teaspoon, about a third of a teaspoon of the oregano. Drop that in. And I also need a teaspoon of fresh ground black pepper. And this we did off camera because you don't want to watch me grind 
black pepper, but that too smells amazing, fresh, delicious. One more of my one teaspoon ingredients, and that is garlic. So let me just mince a little bit of garlic here to make a teaspoon's worth. You know, Wolfgang Puck came to Las Vegas in 1992. He opened Spago. He had opened his first Spago in Southern California in 1982, 10 years earlier. It was a huge, huge success. And he brought that success to Las Vegas. Initially, it was at Caesar's Palace. Uh, a few years ago, it moved over to Bellagio, and now it looks out on the fountains. But beyond Spago, he has done so many other offerings here in Las Vegas. And he is a very beloved, almost a local chef at this point. All right, I think I probably have about a teaspoon or so. It's going to end up being pretty much the whole clove of garlic. So let me just drop all that in my mixing bowl. And then the very last ingredient is a little bit more of that kosher salt. And we only need another half teaspoon of that. So I have my half teaspoon measure. Grab a little bit more kosher salt. Drop that in. And let me just stir up my breadcrumb mixture. That is ready for the chicken breasts. So. Let me go pull those out of the refrigerator and let's get those sauteing. But before we do, let's turn the oven on because as I said, we're going to finish this in the oven. So I'm gonna put it on 350 and get it going while we prepare our chicken on the stovetop. See you in a minute. All right, guys and gals, I just pulled the chicken out of the refrigerator. It's been about 45 minutes. Um, I didn't mention before, the minimum marination is 30 minutes, but you can actually go overnight on this. So you could actually prep the chicken the night before if you want to. All right, I have my chicken ready and I poured my breadcrumb mixture in an old pie tin. So I'm just going to take those four chicken breasts out of the marinade and I'm going to put them in the breadcrumbs and then we're gonna stage them on my cutting board here. Look at those panko breadcrumb goodnesses. Wow. Check that out. There's one. And there's two. I'm not sure if this chicken is actually served at Spago, but it's probably served in Wolfgang's house. <laughs> He also has Postrio over at the Venetian. He has Lupo over at Mandalay Bay. Kind of got his hands in lots of things here in Las Vegas. All right, this is my last chicken breast. Get all the breadcrumbs in the crevices. Alrighty, folks, we are ready to cook. Let me wash my hands and we're gonna get the frying pan out. All right, here I am at the stove with my favorite big saute pan. Very first thing we need to do is turn the heat on medium high underneath that pan. Sometimes that thing a little stubborn. So let me heat up the pan and then the directions tell us to put enough oil in it to measure about a half inch. So we're gonna sort of, not quite deep fry, but uh, definitely fry this chicken in some oil. So let's heat it up first, and then I will pour some oil in. My cameraman back there in his prior life was a short order cook, so he just tossed some water in the pan and it's sizzling hot. So I am going to go ahead and put my vegetable oil in to what looks like a depth of roughly a half inch or so. My short order cook says a little more. <laughs> All right, so let's make sure that is really piping hot for just a moment before I drop my first piece of chicken in there. Chicken breast number one going in. The instructions say we are to put them the breast side down, the rounded side down in the frying pan. And that's actually how I breaded them. So just drop them in that same way. 
Luckily, this pan will hold all four comfortably. Now the directions say about four minutes aside, and then we will turn them. There, we're looking for a golden brown color. Well, hey guys, as with many things, it took longer than four minutes, but we are looking for signs of browning, and I think you're starting to see that on these beautiful chicken breasts. See that? Grab another one. Oh, look at that guy. I'm going to carefully turn him over. Woo! We want to make sure we preserve that wonderful breading on the way over as best we can. Let's see how this one looks. Oh, <laughs> splattered myself, but. That's because I'm in the line of fire. Look at these beautiful chicken fillets, guys. Wow. All right, I'm going to go second side. You know, always goes quicker. So this will probably take four or five minutes. And uh, we'll be ready for the next step. All right, you guys, been about four or five minutes. And the second side is done. We, we lose some of the panko breadcrumbs. But I guess that's just a side effect. What are you going to do? So... The instructions say to briefly blot these on a paper towel and then we're going to put them in a baking dish which is handy right here and they finish in the oven believe it or not for just seven to ten minutes so not very long at all let me turn my saute pan off real quick and then i will grab these and put them in the baking dish and I'll tell you the truth, Dale and I absolutely love all the little pieces of breadcrumb. So I am going to put them in the baking dish. <laughs> we love them. They're delicious. I do the same when I make breaded pork chops. They come out really good. All right, you guys. I'll grab a little bit of this. Sprinkle over the top. And this is going into the oven for seven to 10 minutes at 350. See you in a minute. All righty, you guys, moment of truth. It's been about 10 minutes. I always like to err on the side of too much because I don't like raw chicken. So, oh, what a smell. Oh, they look great. They do look great. Wow. I made a side dish. I'm going to plate this up and we'll meet you guys at the table. It looks like a fantastic Sunday dinner. Actually, oh, I made yeah. a little rice medley to go along with it and some fresh vegetables. And actually, the recipe says you serve it with a lemon wedge, but I don't even think I need a lemon wedge. I can't wait to try this. Give it a shot. May I? You <laughs> Wow, this looks incredible. I can't wait to taste this breadcrumb topping. That is really excellent fried chicken. Good look really, it. really good fried chicken. Beautifully oh, moist you know and who tender. Fried chicken. Who's that? Durango. I don't know. Should I Should call we him? invite him? Right, oh, take another bite. Cut, cut into that. Let's yeah, let me just cut it. into the heart of it. I don't never let go of your rope, even when you're having even dinner. Even when you're having you dinner. You gotta keep the rope with you at all times. All right, Durango, all whatever right. guy guy's gotta do. Let me just ooh. This looks good. That's good stuff right there. Yeah, I gotta get back out. Good stuff. Y'all make that and you're gonna love it. I, I gotta go. That roping and stuff, I gotta go. Uh, Wolfgang Puck did it again. That is really a delicious, delicious marinade and breading on the chicken and the treatment that you give it. It's really, really moist and delicious. I was going to say, that chicken was really moist. And uh, they recommend that whatever you have left over, it makes great sandwiches. You can also cube it and throw it in a salad. So I actually look forward to the leftovers.
Okay, guys, I hope you had a good time. We'll see you next time. Bye, everyone. Tell you what, that was some good chicken. I really like that. You know my cousin, he does those videos also on Sunday. He's a good looking guy. Why don't you check him out?